So as many of you may know, Miss Ariana Grande is in the news. Not only has it been confirmed that she is getting divorced from her husband, Dalton Gomez, but there's also been a lot of drama and hullabaloo around her current relationship with Ethan Slater, one of her co-stars on the set of Wicked. I feel like this whole story has been an ongoing, messy snowball of events that just keeps inundating my feed constantly with new minute details and quotes and statements from publications. And I will give a brief rundown of the timeline of what's going on, but I really want to focus on this girl's girl phrase that's been going around. This phrase has been a thing for a while, but there's definitely a hyper focus on it right now due to Lily J, aka Ethan Slater's ex-wife's quote from, I believe, page six, where she says, Ariana's the story really, not a girl's girl. My family is just collateral damage. Ouch. So I wanted to talk about how the internet has perceived this and what a girl's girl is, what it means. Is it the opposite of a pick me? Is this another phrase to demonize and bully women and all of that fun stuff? So let's talk a little bit about Mrs. Arianka and Mr. Squarepants, shall we? Because yes, she is dating the guy who played SpongeBob in SpongeBob the Musical on Broadway, which is just really going back to the musical theater route. I mean, she's really, she's really, uh, she's back, baby. She's probably singing show tunes with her man as we speak. Sorry, is it bad to make jokes about this? I know this is like damaging lives, but I just, it's just too funny to not like make some jokes about. As a theater kid myself, this is like really funny to me because you know when you're, you're in a show and there's like 30 girls and then there's just like one straight guy there and all of a sudden he's like the hottest man that's ever walked the planet because you're literally just so like, I mean, you gotta look at something, right? And there's just that one guy there and And you would never look twice at him if you were out in the real world. But but there's something about all like the tension that goes on when you're like in a musical and it's inevitable to have those like little crushes because you're seeing them every single day for eight hours during rehearsal. And you're like, you know what? This is this is good enough for me. Anyway, that was a tangent. Sorry. (laughs) But theater kids, you know what I'm talking about. Comment down below. But basically, this really started with Ariana's divorce. She recently got separated from her husband, Dalton Go. Gomez. Allegedly, they were separated in January and they're just now kind of letting people know. She was spotted without her wedding wing. Her wedding wing? A Wimbledon? Jesus Christ. She was spotted without her wedding ring at Wimbledon. People speculated. Comes out later, they're getting divorced and have been separated for months. Then, there's like a little bit of a story that Dalton Gomez is dating other people and he's moved on and Ariana's really sad about it. But like, less than a week later, Mr. SpongeBob SquarePants and her whirlwind romance with him just breaks the news and it's all people are talking about and it's all speculation at first you know did they start dating after the separation or before but the plot thickens because he's actually married with a child and so that's where things kind of get weird because it's like so you messing with a married man or not and it seems like that is true because as all of this stuff is coming out just two days before I'm filming this video he files for a divorce from his wife, Lily J. And so that kind of confirms that, you know, they were messing around while he was still with her and potentially still with Dalton, I don't know. And if that's not enough confirmation for you, Lily J's quote really says it all. Ariana's the story really. She is not a girl's girl and my family is collateral damage. And she also goes on to say, I'm focused on rebuilding a life for our son and rebuilding a life for him, which is just like, ah. So damn heartbreaking. I mean, like, if the internet is siding on anything, it's that what this woman is going through is absolutely terrible. And, you know, I think we all empathize with her or sympathize with her anyways that, you know, this is just such a horrible way to enter motherhood. And I feel really bad for the kid, obviously, because this is just like, you know, nobody wants a broken home. And to have it all so public is just really tragic. I mean, the baby can't receive any of this, but one day he will. And obviously, Lily is juggling a lot with, like, being postpartum and and just having a baby and now she's experiencing the implosion of her relationship in front of the entire world because her husband decided to cheat on her with one of the most famous women in the world and so I just man all I can say is if I was in her position I'd be doing a lot worse than just making statements to page six so good on you Lily because you're you're keeping it classy you know what I mean she could have said and done a lot worse and I just hope that she comes out okay 
and clearly the internet is rallying for her. You know, speaking of Lily and her quotes and what she has said about Ariana, I want that to segue into the next section of this video because although I have a lot of things to say about this whole girl's girl thing and this girl's girl debate, if you want to call it that, I think she's completely justified in saying that. I would probably be saying the same thing and a lot of people are like, oh, like looks like you're blaming Ariana more than your husband and you know, I just, you can just let the lady do what she wants to do. I'm sure she's very angry at her husband or ex-husband, but it's common to blame the woman in this situation. I think a lot of people are blaming Ethan Slater though. I, I don't see people just kind of like ignoring that, but obviously Ariana is way more famous and has a very public dating history and pattern of getting into situations with men who are not single when she meets them. And you know, you can do your digging on that with Big Sean and apparently with Mac Miller that's been rumored. There's just been like kind of a history of this behavior but what makes this such a big story is the fact that he is married or was married with a newborn child but where I really have a problem with kind of this home wrecker not a girl's girl narrative is that I think a lot of people are using this as a way to pounce on Ariana and spew all their vitriol and hatred that they have for her onto her relentlessly and viciously you know it's like I always hated her I always knew Ariana Grande was a heartless backstabbing slut and it's like, okay, I mean, uh. Where some of you start clicking away in the comments, obviously I'm not defending Ariana Grande's action. What she's doing is wrong and it's really messed up that this is a pattern. And people's criticisms of her are valid. And yes, if there's been a pattern of it, of course people are gonna say, oh, I, I always knew something was off about her. So I obviously don't think that Lily saying she's not a girl's girl isn't valid. That is completely valid and she is the one who gets to really say that. But I also think some people's reaction to this is like really emotional and almost as if they were personally victimized by Ariana Grande, which they weren't. So that's really what I'm trying to say here. And I, I feel like a lot of people are using this as a way to justify their deep-seated hatred for Ariana Grande that they couldn't necessarily explain or justify before. But now it's like, oh, great, perfect. Now I can call her a f***ing and it doesn't matter because she's a homewrecker which which to me does read as misogynistic it's like i think you just want to hate her and now that you know she's done something unsavory it's like safe to just dump out all that misogyny and like unjustified hatred onto her because of the situation and like so i've seen i've seen like a few tiktoks where girls are like i never liked ariana grande and i never understood why my ex-boyfriend had such a deep obsession with her and always like jerked off to her before bed you know what i mean it's like okay yeah you just don't like her because your boyfriend had a crush on her once upon a time and that's you know normal jealousy but I just think people's reaction towards this and towards her and their feelings about her are just like really really harsh and strong and I get it this is a very like intense situation it's very sad to see but I don't know it's like you can just kind of like not like Ariana Grande just to not like her sometimes that happens you see a celebrity and you're like I don't really vibe with her I don't really vibe with him and it's like that's fine but with women it's like you know as soon as something like this happens this is like perfect ammunition to to destroy them and so the whole girls girls thing kind of reminds me of the pick me conversation because although like many internet phrases that are like pseudo feminist they start off from a, a good place or a place of genuine discourse and and discussion that needs to be had about internalized misogyny and and the relationship women have with other women and our expectations as women to please men it, it kind of turned and warped into this like bastardized misappropriated phrase that was used just to hate on other women and although yes I think the whole pick me thing is like a real thing and there's the whole I'm not like other girls thing it's like turned into this really negative way to like bully women and, and divide each other because it's it's, I, I feel like there's this kind of like you can't sit with us mentality when it comes to these little phrases to describe women like oh you're a pick me you can't sit with us go over there we reject you you're not a real woman we don't accept you or oh you're not a girl's girl well then go over there with the pick me's we don't want to talk to you you're a hater you're a mean girl you're a 
much and there's just all this like division and all this like cattiness and and these groups that were like forming amongst women and I, I don't think it's very productive and I want to reiterate that the Ariana Grande situation is making me think of this girls girls thing I'm not saying that what people are saying is necessarily wrong I think a better example would be kind of like the Kylie Jenner Selena Gomez Hailey Bieber situation where I don't know they had some beef on Instagram over eyebrows or something and then all of a sudden people are like oh Hailey Bieber is a is a mean girl Kylie Jenner is a mean girl and there's like this uh, this obsession with who is a mean girl and I don't entirely see the point of that especially with the whole Kylie Jenner Hailey Bieber situation because it seemed so juvenile the Ariana Grande situation is a lot more serious and really is affecting people's personal lives and families but I've just noticed that there's like a witch hunt for mean girls and ariana also has gotten the whole mean girl rumors and i don't know if that's true i've never met her but she's got that reputation as well and are we doing this with men not really he's a mean boy said nobody ever <laughs> like if you're in a situation where you are detecting a pick me right um and they say something like oh i don't really need makeup like i think makeup is stupid or i hate the color pink it's so juvenile but like i hate the color pink or i never wear dresses you know i don't really like shopping and all that stuff i just want to play video games and eat pizza with the boys it's like okay why what makes what where does that come from why do you feel the need to say those things and separate yourself from other women or what is traditionally feminine and I think it's more productive to question and to interrogate these thoughts rather than just being like, oh, you're a pick me, bye. I'm like not talking to you because you're a bad person or whatever. You hate women. And the thing is like, we're all victims of misogyny, right? We all have or have had internalized misogyny within us. So why condemn a woman because she's not attacking internalized misogyny the same way or at the same rate that you are? This isn't really gonna help us. It's only dividing us. And it's such a common tactic amongst people who want to obtain and abuse power is by making the people fight amongst each other, you know, make the marginalized and the minorities fight amongst each other. So so the people in power can remain in power because we're too distracted fighting amongst ourselves to actually like unionize, come together and take it down. Yes, we need to be aware of the pick me's. We need to be aware of this pick me ism that happens. And with that awareness, we can help each other and form some alliance and empathy. And I get it. It's like the pick me's don't want allegiance. They don't want alliance. That's kind of the whole point of it. But maybe if we like try to educate each other rather than just pushing each other away, that would help because you know, if we're just pointing fingers being like you're a pick me you're a pick me um you're not a good woman you're not a, uh, a girl's girl then i feel like that's gonna push those women away from other women even more and they're gonna be like see this is why i'm not like other girls because you guys are bullies and you're mean i mean shall we recall what we did to jennifer lawrence as a society everyone was like oh she's trying too hard i don't know if the word pick me was really like in the zeitgeist the way it is now when she was at her peak and then had her downfall if you will but so many people especially women were attacking her being like oh you're trying too hard you're trying to be not like other girls like we get it you eat pizza and fall on the red carpet and bullied her to the point where she kind of had to go away for a while and now she's having a comeback and people are realizing like oh i think we were too harsh on jennifer lawrence when she was just being herself so i feel like she's a good example of how the word pick me or the idea of a pick me is sometimes used just to bully other women and you know what is a girl's girl exactly what does it mean to be a girl's girl a girl's girl is a girl who supports other women a girl who is going to side with other women and wants to lift lift other women up they are centering women rather than men they prioritize the community and acceptance and love of other women rather than centering the acceptance of men in their lives right and that's why you know people are like oh ariana grande is a not a girl's girl because she would rather have the uh, validation and affections of a man rather than respecting another woman's relationship and I think there's more to it than that I don't necessarily like think being involved in cheating automatically makes you not a girl's girl um, obviously if you know that you're uh, uh, taking a man away from another woman that's not good but also with that it's like you can't take people away from other people they're not property if that man is willing to cheat on his wife that is his decision and yeah it sucks that she was kind of just down for that but you know it takes two to tango right but with ariana it's like okay so 
if she has a pattern of being a, a home wrecker, if she has a pattern of stealing men away from women, maybe a little bit of empathy would be helpful. Obviously, she's a grown woman who has made her decisions and she has made these kinds of decisions multiple times. And my empathy or sympathy really lies with Lily, of course. But I guess what I'm trying to say is there's clearly something deeper going on with her. And there is a reason why she does this. Like, I've been in a situation where I was like the Lily J, kind of, not e even like close to the extreme circumstances of her situation. But when I was looking at the girl, who was like, man, like, you would rather be with a guy who treats other women like crap and steps out on other girls rather than like side with the girl and be like, what you're doing is wrong and you're a really crappy dude. I look at her and I'm like, I honestly feel bad for you because you are so desperate to be with a man and to be validated by a man. You don't even care about looking out for the other woman around you because you're so deeply and emotionally damaged that this feels good to you. It feels good to take a man away from a woman. That is like a prize. And not to get too deep into the personal anecdotes, but you know, we had mutual friends and this girl who quote unquote stole my man, she would brag about it. She would brag to other people being like, yeah, he was dating someone else, but then we started dating and like he chose me over her. Yeah, that's annoying. But also you should be seeing a therapist. You don't need a boyfriend, hun. And if that's what gives you validation, if that's what makes you feel confident about yourself, that is really, really sad. And I, I'm sorry that that's how you feel about yourself. Bringing it back to empathy, this girl who I know from my real life, had been through a lot in her life with her family. And I'm not gonna put her business out on blast, but I was like, I get why you are the way that you are because you've been through a lot. And it's not an excuse, but I understand it. And it's the same with Ariana Grande because she's also been through a lot with the death of Mac Miller and the Manchester bombing and all of these things, her, her breakup with Pete Davidson, who she was engaged to. Like, it's all just a lot of stuff. And I think she's a traumatized person and she may exhibit behaviors that are indicative or connected to a past trauma and i hope that she can work that out you know it's not an excuse of course but that's my that's my empathetic take all right sue me i know it's easy because it's she's a celebrity it's like oh like you know she's trash whatever break up with your girlfriend was was a little too accurate break up with your girlfriend hey yeah because i'm bored <laughs> sorry i had to do it but you know i really am just like damn if this is a pattern clearly there's something deeply wrong there's something that's not right in her life in her in her mind in her heart <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I've I've like this is clearly like her trying to quell some sort of pain from her divorce and you know maybe something in her childhood caused her to have these patterns. You know you know what I mean? So it's not that I'm making excuses, she's a grown ass woman, but I just feel like but you know, it just seems like this whole girls girls thing is becoming this weird little club and it's like who gets to be one, who isn't? If you don't follow these specific rules, if you don't fall in line of what it means to be a girls girl perfectly all the time, then you are condemned and you are a massage who needs to be sent to the gulag and it's like okay none of us are perfect oh and you know i'm not saying the term girls girl is bad like i've used the term before i would consider myself one for the girls that's for sure and i've probably said like oh that person's not a girl's girl and i don't think it's an, an inherently bad thing to say that obviously like sometimes that truly is the case but i also want to challenge us to exercise some empathy with these women and you know it's heartbreaking to see someone of your own kind like turn against you and it's like damn like don't you see that we're all struggling like why don't you like join join the crew and like actually like try to lift each other up like we're already being pushed down by society as it is like we should be sticking together and it's really disappointing when you see a woman who goes against that and doesn't want to be a part of that we should be safe amongst each other that's how it should be and um even girls who make mistakes or, or girls who you know exhibit behaviors of pick me ism or not being a girl's girl they're not safe here either it seems like and you know it's just important to give each other some grace here and there this isn't me defending ariana's 
his actions, by the way, I'm really just using this situation, just commenting on the reaction of the situation and how people have interpreted it. Uh, you guys obviously know I'm an Ariana fan, but I, I'm not like, I don't feel emotionally attached to this whole situation. It doesn't really affect the way that I listen to her music or how I view her as an artist. I don't know this lady. Does this scenario absolutely suck? For sure. But I don't know. I'm not like, oh, Ariana, I'm so disappointed in you. Like, I don't know. I don't know her. And I talked about this in my last video about Doja Cat, so go check that out if you haven't already. But I, I think this, the whole obsession with celebrity relationships is like, is so intense. It's so intense right now, especially because with this divorce and this room in this whole situation with Mr. Squarepants, it's like, oh my God, every freaking hour upon the hour, there's like a new update and there's a new quote and there's an, I'm just like, I'm tired and I'm tired of seeing this freaking picture of her and this man where they cropped Cynthia Revo out at some dark restaurant. I'm like, I don't, please, I, I'm gonna throw up if I see this picture one more time. I can't. For their sake, I'm like, can we get a pop walk or something? Like, if you're gonna keep pushing the story, let's get some new photos. And, you know, I'm saying I'm tired of it as if I'm not making a freaking YouTube video about it, but, you know, I'm in my bag. I'm in my bag, okay? But I gotta say, you know, prayers to this man because, whoo, Throwing away 10 years and your new family for a pop star who is going to brush you to the side by the end of this movie, that's gonna be rough. Cause she's gonna go on and she's gonna have her career and this will be, you know, a bump in her timeline, but this is not gonna be good for him in the end. He's gonna be left in the dust without a family and potentially without a career who knows because it's like you this is your introduction to like Hollywood and everything I know he's on Broadway and stuff but this is his mainstream intro and I just don't really think this is a great way to introduce yourself to the public like this you know and that could really damage his career and he's already done damage to his family so not very smart on his end I don't want to say I understand why he's doing it but I can understand the dynamic and and why this happened because like this dude this very average looking dude Dude, the entire internet is calling him fugly and you know he's this goofy dude he's on set with Ariana Grande Ariana is probably in an emotional state and is looking for someone to connect with and maybe you know just like pour her heart out onto someone and doesn't want to be alone so she's like I choose you and so he's like me let alone me you went Ariana Grande wants to talk to me and confided me and smooch me on the lips and tell me that I'm the love of her life it's like okay yeah of course he's gonna go for it like a freaking it you know how men are like I'm not saying all men would abandon their family for an international pop star but I feel like most of them would you know what I'm saying like this is not terribly surprising when it comes to the track record that men have you know what I mean so it's kind of like uh it was bound to be this way unfortunately because it's hard to say no to someone like Ariana Grande you know what I mean especially if you're a guy like Ethan Slater it'd be different if he was like a big famous celebrity and already had his life and his career but he's not he's just some normal dude from Broadway who's like way down here in comparison to Ariana Grande and her her star power and her beauty and her, all that all that stuff so he kind of didn't stand a chance and I can see why <laughs> Lily J is is pissed at Ariana because it's like girl you knew what you were doing you held my baby <laughs> she held the baby and lied to her face and it's like you know ariana has a lot of power in this situation and she'll come out of this okay she'll be fine her career isn't gonna end because of this but this affair is gonna have lifelong ramifications for ethan and his ex-wife and his and his son so it's just really very sad to see but it'll do great for wicked numbers i mean assuming that all of this stuff is still on people's minds by the time the movie comes out I'm sure it'll get the don't worry darling treatment where people are so invested in the drama that they will see the movie even if they weren't planning on seeing it beforehand people are like oh this is gonna hurt the movie no it's not it's only gonna make it better so you know I'm, I'm sure people will be glued to all of the press around Wicked especially if Ethan and Ariana break up before the movie comes out and they have to do press together there's just so many possibilities so many opportunities for drama and there's gonna be a part two to this video on Patreon 
Patreon where I talk about the business of celebrity relationships and the obsessions that we have with it because, you know, again, Don't Worry Darling kind of had a similar narrative going on. And in general, we have an obsession with celebrity relationships as I'm talking about it on YouTube right now. All these relationship scandals are just money making machines. I mean, my God, it's it's kind of like imperative at this point in Hollywood. That's why we have like PR relationships and stuff. So yeah, if you're interested in that, then keep your eyes peeled. I will post the link on the community tab when it's ready. But in the meantime, go check out my Patreon if you'd like to support this channel and you can get exclusive content and sometimes early access to my videos. Let me know what you guys think of this whole situation in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Bye!